Hey team, welcome back to the channel. I'm Frank Cho and I'm here to help you live a richer life. Now, I don't normally do these reaction videos to millennial money. That's definitely a grand step in thing and he does a great job with it. But I couldn't resist today when I saw this one drop because uh, the lady in this one is in Dallas, which is where I grew up. So I'm from Arlington, Texas, right outside Dallas. And seeing this kind of reminded me of home, and I was really excited with some of the things she said because there's some great things to talk about. So I can filter in, you know, my love of personal finance and my love for Texas in this video. So if you're the kind of person that likes Friday night football, barbecue, and Whataburger, I need you to do a Texas two-step all over that like button and make sure to subscribe to the channel. That being said, let's jump right into living on $58,000 a year in Dallas, Texas, the latest episode of Millennial Money. All right, so let's hop into it. I'm going to pause throughout and give you a little bit of my feedback on what she says and what I think about her financial decisions, as well as the beautiful land that she lives in. Let's go. I think that teachers have had a bad rep in the United States and especially working for public schools in terms of like low salaries and other negative bad conditions. But I think that it's totally possible to be a professional teacher and to live comfortable life on a teacher's salary here in Texas. So I gotta stop and say, I totally agree with this. My mom was a teacher. Teachers are overworked, underpaid, underappreciated, but they're the people that are on the front lines of educating our students and really making sure that our kids grow up and are able to you know, learn, grow, develop, and have the fundamentals that they need for their life. I'm Lonnie Huang. I'm 25 years old. I make $58,400 a year and I live in Dallas, Texas. I'm a middle school math teacher. So my mom taught middle school. I know how hard this is and how much work that she's got to put in. I think it's really awesome that she was able to do virtual summer school and make these instructional videos as a good side hustle. And I hope that she's able to continue doing that even as we continue on throughout just you know the pandemic, but going forward. When I was working in Oklahoma, my starting salary was one of the lowest starting salaries for teachers in the nation. The starting salary back then, I believe was like 32,000, like 400 or 900. And so moving to Texas, it was definitely like a 10, $15,000 salary increase with the same amount of experience. This is really great. So she's looking at different markets for being able to use her education and her career path to be able to have a successful career and be able to make money. Great opportunity for her to be able to move from one place where she's underpaid to a more fair market value. So this is something we should all be considering, right? Consider where you live as part of your career pathing because it doesn't just matter how much you make, it matters how far those dollars get you based on where you live. Growing up in Thailand and then coming to the States, there's a different standard of living, but there's also the expectation as like a second generation immigrant for me that I have to do better than my mom. And so there was that pressure of always like achieving along with like the Asian culture of the high expectations of, you know, being a doctor, a lawyer. Asian parents. My mom, through all of her sayings and just growing up with her like frugal habits, definitely affected who I am as a person. In Chicago, I definitely wouldn't be able to afford the houses there, but moving to Texas and seeing how affordable houses still are, especially with the salary that I'm making as a teacher here, I knew I had to jump on this opportunity. This is where I want to pause. We've got a house in Dallas for $155,000. You saw this in the thumbnail. Texas is a great market for houses. Affordable housing can be found all over, especially in the Metroplex, which is you know the big area by Dallas, Fort Worth, Arlington, Grand Prairie, Grapevine, all these cities, right? You've got like 40 plus cities all clustered together. And there's a lot of affordable housing, lots of options there. The one thing about Texas though that you have to be careful of is really high property taxes. The property taxes there are really high. 
but there's no state income tax. And so that's kind of the trade off. No state income tax, higher property taxes, uh, but the housing is pretty affordable there. And you can get a lot of bang for your buck. You, you search for it, look and see what you can buy in Texas for $400,000, $500,000, way more than you would get in any of these other big cities. And you're talking about a place that has lots of jobs. You see all these companies moving from California to Texas. So much opportunity there. And I mean, let's not even talk about the Mexican food at the barbecue that, God, makes me mix it that much more. Yes, $10,000 down on this. She didn't tie up too much money in this property. Now, I know so many of the finance people out here say, oh, you got to have 20% down, 20% down. If she's making $58,000 a year, it's going to take her a long time to do that. And house prices are going to keep rising while she's trying to save. It, it's not necessarily worth it for you to wait till you have that 20%. You can get into a house with less down, start building that equity, and really get your money into the principal. That's really helpful. I have gotten every house I've ever owned with only 5% down, and I've paid them down on an accelerated basis to get rid of that PMI for sure. But get into the house first, right? And this is great. She's done a really great thing here. I didn't know about closing costs. So I knew about the down payment. I knew I had to have you know, a certain amount to put down and I actually bought my home with the Teachers Next Door program. So the realtor um, contributes part of their commission to the closing costs, which was very, very helpful. What you might not know is, is this is available to teachers and there's also certain like frontline workers that this can apply to as well, firemen, police, teachers, it's worth looking into. It's a program run by uh, Housing and Urban Development. Google it, research it if you're in one of those positions because it really has some great benefits for you. I think a lot of people are surprised, especially because they know I have a boyfriend. They're like, oh, did you guys like, you know, buy it together? That's always like one of their first questions. For real, in 2020, are we still asking that? Look at her, she's killing it. I definitely was paying for a majority of things and when he was able to I started you know charging for rent and utilities and so over time I've been increasing that amount but it's not quite half as of right now. Money's one of the biggest things couples fight over. I like how she's actually trying to make it a little bit more balanced but the one thing that I think is really important is that you find not a 50-50 solution but an equitable solution in so many relationships uh couples they don't make the same kind of money right you might have one person who's a teacher one person who's a doctor is it fair for them to pay 50 50 um i don't really think so so that's going to be a topic for a future video is you know how to really manage your finances as a couple successfully but i think it's good that they're at least trying to find some equity in their relationship especially on the money side That'll save a lot of problems down the road. My insurance didn't cover that because this year I chose to have the cheapest insurance. I gotta say it's amazing that she was able to get her wisdom teeth removed for that price because when I got my wisdom teeth removed 10 years ago, it was that same price. At least we haven't seen the same massive inflation in wisdom teeth removal that we've seen in tuition at colleges. Am I right? Not thinking that I was going to need to get my wisdom teeth removed. And so the bill was close to $2,000 and I had to pay for it, like upfront, all of it. My mindset towards saving is that everything that I'm putting into my savings, that's money I don't have anymore. So let's take a quick look at her budget here for the month. So obviously the wisdom teeth removal, that's a one-time thing, right? So housing, her mortgage, 1217, uh, mortgage, PMI. The PMI is going to be probably 200 bucks or so. Um, but she's still getting that principal reduction by buying the house now. And the market's getting hotter down there as well. And prices are rising. I think that's happening everywhere uh, across the country. So she's, uh, she's getting at least a little bit of her money towards the principal and being able to retain some of that. So I think it's a good decision. Miscellaneous here. So let's see what that entails. Travel, donations, cat food. Well, travel's probably pretty light right now. Donations. I'd imagine if she's, you know, active in her community or church or whatever, that, that's a 
a pretty good chunk of change, you know, plus 15% there. I think that's great. It's good that she's wanting to get back there. Uh, and cat food, of course, you gotta take care of your animals. Uh, pension. Hey, you know, teachers, the one thing that they've got going there is they do still have a pension plan. You know, it could be a good thing. Most of us, eh, not an option. Uh, food, 374 a month. Uh, groceries and eating out. That's not really that bad. I mean, when you think if you go out a couple times a month and you spend $20, $50, depending on if you're paying for someone else with you, um, that and your grocery bill, yeah, I don't think that's too bad. You know, as a single person or a couple there, if they're spending 80, 100 bucks a week on groceries, I mean, that's, that's pretty good. And that's what that, you know, averages out to. Uh, utilities, 329. Utilities, see, the thing in Texas is it's hot so much of the year that you're usually running your air conditioner um, throughout most of the year. So I get it. I've been there. I've, I've paid those utilities. It's hot. Transportation, uh, her car must be paid off, so just sets gas and car insurance. Uh, that's not bad. That means she's probably not driving too much. Her insurance is cheap, probably an older car. Uh, not to mention gas in Texas is so much cheaper than anywhere else. Uh, I live in Nevada, and anytime we go back to Texas, it's like 50 cents a gallon cheaper. It's nice. Health, dental, vision, uh, 85 bucks a month. That's not bad. That, that really isn't bad. I mean, I, I've had jobs where it's more than that for paycheck, so it's uh, it's good. And then subscriptions, let's see. Teachers union dues, I, those always hit you. Yep, I get it. Um, I haven't seen my mom deal with teacher uh, issues there. Uh, Amazon Prime, Spotify. Amazon Prime, I can't fault anybody in Dallas for getting Amazon Prime because same day delivery and fresh and all these other things that they have there. Prime Now, you know, whatever. They have every Prime option you can imagine. Um, so, yeah, worth it. Phone, 50 bucks a month. That's not bad at all. So, overall, I, her budget's pretty good here. Uh, her housing's inexpensive, and she owns. Uh, her transportation's cheap. Uh, she doesn't have a big car payment. It looks like she's doing really well. I'm, I'm going to assume that uh, on the months where she doesn't have a wisdom teeth removal, she's probably saving a pretty good amount of money. I mean, that's... 1850 that's not being you know spent in a normal month so let's see what she says look at that saves a thousand dollars a month look at that as a teacher if any of you out there think that you have an excuse not to save look at this a thousand dollars a month on a teacher's salary that's amazing she's killing it look at that oh oh and look at her wallet too you see those visas there that looks like a chase sapphire mm -hmm. Nice. Check out that list of assets. That's awesome. For her, at her age, like 25, this is great. Doing good. Um, during the week, I meal prep, so Monday through Friday. It's just easier because as a teacher, I don't... Yes, meal prepping. Don't waste money going out to eat for lunches. Prep your meals at home. This is great. She is like doing everything right. Amazing. 2008 Honda Civic for $2,500. Honda Civic, going to last, going to be easy to repair, inexpensive to repair and maintain, cheap to insure, great on gas, paid in full. She's basically just putting more money in the bank by driving this car, right? She's able to save $1,000 a month because her total cost of ownership for her vehicle is so low. Look back at the video we made where we talked about total cost of car ownership. All that money she is saving into her various accounts, her retirement, her investments, because this car is not dragging her down. No payment, none of that mess. She's probably got liability only. Insurance is cheaper down there. Gas is cheaper. So her transportation expenses are incredibly low versus what most people are doing. Great job. <laughs> Paid off student loans. Come on. It's perfect. She has set herself up so well. So even if she's not making as much money as some of these other people who are, you know, software engineers and everything, she's got everything else in order. And if she's not servicing crazy debt or anything, uh, she's saving more than any of those other people would be doing. 
and doing better than if she was living in Silicon Valley or anything like that. Because her costs are low, her income's solid, and she's saving. She's not inflating her lifestyle. Doing great. Amazing. After graduating college, I had about $16,000 in student debt. Teach for America. It's a great program. If you think teaching is the route you want to go, they, they're so good at, you know, placing you into a good spot to get experience. And then you can see, like, with her, covered $12,000 of her loans. I would say I'm a good saver, um, or I would like to think I'm a good saver when I can be. But in terms of, like, investing, I'm still new at that. And so good with money, I feel like, is relative. Like, am I comfortable with um, where I am right now? If an emergency were to happen, would I be okay? I think I would say yes. But I think that if I upward compare, there's people doing like way better and maybe have more knowledge about financial literacy than I do. But with the knowledge that I do have, I find it important with my role as a teacher, a math teacher, teaching low income or high risk students. I do feel like it's my responsibility to share the knowledge that I have learned. Since I've increased my salary, I don't think I'm as nitpicky about cutting costs and I finally feel at the point where I don't have to be so conscious and obsessed with like my finances the way that I used to feel. I want to enjoy the moment because as much as I'm a high achieving person, I also realize that I, there has to be a balance between enjoying what I have because if you're always looking towards the next thing, you're never going to feel like you have enough. She's got a great point there. Uh, we can be obsessive with our finances to the point where it's unhealthy. I've maybe been guilty a few times of being a little obsessive, so it's good that she can take a step back and recognize, hey, you know, uh, I should enjoy things. She's doing great. I mean, uh, you look at her, especially versus some of the people we've seen on uh, CNBC before on Millennial Money who just kind of blow through it. I think she's got good habits, which is the most important foundational thing, um, and then she follows it. And she's saving a thousand dollars a month. I mean, that's really good. That's on top of her pension that she's putting aside every month. So it's really awesome to see someone who's out there actually kind of living these principles that we talk about on the channel. Overall, I would give her a 10 out of 10, uh, really doing a great job, especially as a teacher being that disciplined with a lower salary than some of these other uh, career paths out there. She's making a huge impact on her students' lives. She's working with low-income, high-risk students. She's really making a difference, having been around those kind of schools uh, with my mom in Fort Worth. I understand that it's a challenge for the teachers, definitely, but they're doing it because they have passion for the students and for education. And so I think what she's doing is great. Major props to her, and make sure that you give this video a thumbs up if you thought that it was meaningful for you. And let me know in the comments what you'd like to see in the future. Do you like these reaction videos? Uh, are they something that you find entertaining, meaningful? If not, I won't do any more. But if it's something you like, then it's something I could definitely do. Between this and a lot of the other channels out there have some great content that we can react to and talk about together. Thanks for joining. I'll see you next time.